Hello there. The return of short-term Prime Minister Liz Truss to the public has thrown her successor Rishi Sunak into, yeah, quite some trouble. The cracks in his Conservative Party are becoming more and more apparent and the Prime Minister's workload is mounting. Truss is already the second ex-head of government to drive the internal power struggle. Boris Johnson has been involved again for weeks. Large donations and trips abroad to Kiev and Washington give the impression that Johnson is aiming for managerial position again. Or even his old post at Downing Street. Truss, who, like Johnson, is an internal opponent of Sunak, is now making sure that there is no peace in the Conservative Party. She showed up demonstratively with old allies in Westminster. Just as a reminder, Truss failed after less than 50 days in office because, although she was serving a conservative dogma with her low-tax policy, she shocked the financial markets with her purely debt finance projects. Sunak stepped in to sweep up the shards she left. It succeeded, albeit at the cost of raising taxes, a red rag for many Tories. And this is where Truss puts the axe on. In a long article for the conservative newspaper Sunday Telegraph, I talked about this yesterday, and in an interview with the TV channel of the conservative magazine Spectator, she made it clear that she still believes her policies are the right ones. The main blame for her becoming the shortest serving prime minister in history lies with others. A very powerful economic establishment and a lack of political support. By insisting she was right after all, she was suggesting that Sunak's dovish, confidence-building fiscal policy was wrong, as the BBC commented. The consequences of trust fiasco are still being felt, though. Homeowners, for example, will have to pay higher mortgage interest rates for years, and that's because the banks had increased the rates enormously as part of trussonomics. But that doesn't bother some Tories. So entrenched is the ideology of strict tax cuts. Health Secretary Steve Barclay, for example, was receptive to Truss's focus on growth at any cost. She was never given a fair chance to implement her ideas, is what Barclay said about this. And the BBC quoted a former cabinet member saying that Truss did not see the government as conservative, but as social democratic. And that is quite a harsh swear word for the Tories. A government official told the broadcaster, Liz was crazy, but she was right. Rishi is wrong, but he is competent. Well, weird one. Conservatives already have their backs against the wall to make matters worse for Sunak. He is the only prime minister, or he is only prime minister because Trust failed so miserably and the party hoisted him into office without an election and they wanted him to be a quick fix. When he competed against the then Secretary of State or Foreign Minister for Johnson's successor in the summer, he indeed lost at the party base. In any case, it's an exciting constellation that has resulted from the many changes in Downing Street in recent years. For the first time in history, there are seven living ex-prime ministers. In addition to Truss and Johnson, his predecessor Theresa May, as well as David Cameron, Gordon Brown, Tony Blair and John Major. While the latter are sometimes more or less clear about the current situation, three former heads of government, May, Johnson and Truss, are still sitting in Parliament as so-called backbenchers and are literally breathing down Sunak's neck. May was critical, especially during Johnson's scandal-ridden period, but recently stayed on course. But the other two make no secret of the fact that they still have any political plans. The ghosts of the messy Conservative Party are never far away. That is how the BBC commented on that. The Conservatives already have their backs against the wall, as I said, and the government is, is just as unable to get a grip on the strikes that have been raging on the railways, in, in the health service and the other sectors, 
as it is on the increasing number of illegal entries. And all polls are currently predicting a resounding defeat in the parliamentary election planned for late 24, early 25. And even if Truss insists that she does not want to become prime minister again, her statements and the long shadow of Johnson, in, in whom many at the base still see the most promising conservative election campaigner, are unlikely to improve the situation. And the distraction is already huge. So Sunak will have a hell of a life in the next month to come. And I'll see you in my next video. I'll be back.